Right now, we're joined in the studio by Sharon Sumner, the independent councillor for Alexandra Ward. First things first, Sharon, how are you today? I'm absolutely fine, but I'd just like to clarify, I'm um, an independent Liberal Democrat councillor. I'm still a Liberal Democrat councillor, mm. still committed and loyal to the party and a big supporter of Ed Davey. So it's just the group on the council that you've left. You did a blog article kind of outlining the reasons why you've why you've resigned. For people who haven't had a chance to read that, could you outline kind of broadly the, the key reasoning uh, for your departure? Um, I found since joining the group and and, um, some of the decisions that have been made, I I had a a few problems with. Um, I thought that by leaving the group, I would be able to represent the um, residents of Alexandra Ward much better by having a freer voice and being free of any party line or whip. Um, There was a few decisions which I found difficult um, as I explained in my blog um, which anyone can read I believe it's online as well if anyone wants to have a look Um, but decisions for example like the closure of Murray House I thought it was the wrong time to be doing it Uh, it's something that's used for um, in winter for discharging of elderly patients that are in hospital as almost as a halfway back to going home and to close it before winter to me didn't seem the most sensible idea I think we don't know what the winter is going to be like and there was also the fact that the, the the leadership had promised on numerous numerous occasions that they would keep Murray House open for the elderly residents that were still in there for mm. their, until till the end of their natural lives. And I know we're under financial pressure, but I thought there was no creativity in looking for alternative uses uses for the for the building, which would, would allow the residents to stay in situ, uh, but while still using the rest of the building um, to its full potential. Staying on Murray House, because of course we'll move on to other things in a bit, but that w- that is something that kind of Labour and the Conservatives are picking up on as a broken promise from the Kingston Lib Dems. Do you view it as a broken promise, having just resigned? Um, I feel that um, a number of people that were portfolio holders, including Margaret Thompson, who is still portfolio holder for... for um, care of for the elderly and um liz green also made the commitment on public record i feel to me it felt if it wasn't explained well enough um we didn't tell residents why they felt they had to go back on their word patricia uh, patricia bramford also i believe said on the records that it shouldn't be shot um i know dis- difficult decisions have to be made um, but I do think that we owe it to the population of Kingston to tell people why we're making these decisions and also to ensure that we are fully exploring all alternatives before making that decision. And it came out of the scrutiny panel. Um, Margaret Thompson admitted that other other um, uses for the building um, hadn't been fully costed, hadn't been fully explored. And, and I feel that that, is, that isn't the correct way of doing things. If we have to make a hard decision like closing Murray House, then we should be fully evaluating all other options before we do so. Okay. In the blog as well, you kind of criticised the the top down, uh, the people at the top uh, for for your resignation. What about your fellow councillors for Alexandra Ward? I mean, how how did they react to the news when you when you told them you'd be resigning? Um, um, the I've had an email to say that they obviously want to meet up to look about how we move forward and and work for the best interests of the Alexandra residents, uh, which is something I completely and utterly agree with i think we the focus in all of this it has to be the residents and how we best help them okay. some people might look at your resignation sharon and say well why why didn't sharon kind of stay and and try and reform it from the inside but this is something that's been going on for a lot for it's perhaps a long-term decision rather than a short-term decision uh, could you explain why you you've perhaps found some difficulty with with this particular kingston lib dem group um, yeah, I would say I've, I've been a member since 2015. I joined on the back of um, Ed Davies' uh, defeat in, in the 2015 general election. And, um, and I found Kingston Liberal Democrats to be you know, a wonderful place, a lot, full of lots of people, really good people. Um, I did encounter some difficulties, I would say, um, before the actual, if you like, short campaign, the, the part of the the election campaign for the local elections that people see. Um, there was a few, I 
for many reasons, personal reasons, I asked to be my own election agent. That's the person that um, issues the literature, makes decisions about your campaign. Um, and this is one thing which um, many people know about and some people don't. Um, but hopefully if there's anyone listening that has a similar experience, they can contact me about. Um, but I was actually a, a victim of childhood abuse in my early years and grew up in a household with domestic violence, abuse. Um, I was abused by a family member. Um, and like many people that have been affected by a similar um, past, I have problems with surrendering control. Um, I had no control as a child over what happened to me. I only regained that control as an adult when I was able to face my abuser in court. And I made a decision at that point that I wouldn't allow something like that. It wasn't my fault. I won't let it dominate my life and I'll keep control of my life. So one of the things I did speak to the leadership about before even agreeing to stand was my need to to have some element of control over what was happening to me. And so I asked to either be my own agent or nominate an agent who I felt I had complete trust over. Um, and in the party, it was decided, the leadership decided that they would have one agent across the whole of the borough. For all of the councillors. For all 48 candidates. Right. Um, the person that I selected is a great person. It's no personal reflection of him. Um, it was just something that I, it's just about how I felt and how I deal with what happened to me in the past. I asked if I could be my own agent or have, or, or be a sub-agent, so I'd have some control. I... All, I asked on several occasions. I explained all the reasons, and f- and your personal reasons. Did you personal did you explain that to the group? I did. I I actually went to the campaign meeting, with which is full of the campaign team, and told a room full of virtual strangers about what had happened, how it how it made me feel, and how their decision to put an agent on me and force an agent on me, would, how, what effect it would have on me, and um, they decided that that they would keep to their original decision. Now, one of the reasons that I joined the Liberal Democrats is that it's a party which is inclusive. It encourages or wants to encourage people to get involved in politics from all backgrounds, all experiences, and is open and inclusive. And I was quite surprised by that decision uh, because to me, it was enabling me to have more control over what was happening in my campaign would enable me to be elected and, and, and move forward and feel comfortable um, but that top-down um, enforcement, if you like, of, of it's our way or, or the highway mm. didn't fit in with what I felt the Liberal Democrat ethos was. I felt that if I'd had a physical disability, for example, they would move, they would do whatever they needed to do to help me. Um, but because, if you like, what happened to me wasn't, a phys- wasn't physically seen, you can't see it on the surface, right. it was just pushed to one side and, and ignored. Okay. And so there's been a few things where I felt that the sort of autocratic, um, dogmatic sort of way of dealing things has not really fitted into what I consider to be, you know, the core Lib Dem values. You shared some of your personal experiences then, um, mm. and thank you very much for sharing that, because obviously that's, that's very personal. Was being a counsellor perhaps something that, was it an achievement when you did that, after some of the horrific things you'd experienced in the past? Oh, yes, completely. It's the main reason I wanted to stand. I want to. I wanted to be able to turn around to, to other teenagers, children, and even adults that have experienced any kind of childhood trauma or rape to say, you can take control of your life, you can succeed, you don't have to be defined by what happened to you. You can you can change your life at any point, and if there is anyone out there that that wants that that feels that would like to talk to me about what's happened, if there's anybody that's had similar experiences, don't know who to approach, please do. All my contact details are available online, and I'm I'm there for you if 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 you need any help. Mm. You mentioned in the blog post as well about that you're still a very loyal uh, kind of supporter of Sir Edward Davy. How did he react to the decision? Did you tell him directly? Um, I spoke to I spoke to Ed. Prior to making my decision, um, I spoke to him in, in detail. Um, he was disappointed that it come to that that point. Mm. You you've kind of highlighted that you're still a Liberal Democrat at heart. Are you are you still going to be as involved nationally with the national campaign to the Lib Dems? I am a loyal Liberal Democrat. Um, I believe the party is the true home of of of, of in, inclusive values. I think it's the only party nationally that's coming up with, with answers to questions, for example, in terms of Brexit. Um, they, they stand for fairness. They stand for, for 
for everyday people that are in the street. And I want to do everything I can to champion that. You've said as well that it's perhaps 100 days. Is it 100 days into Kingston Council yes. now? So it's 100 days. Um, you're obviously not happy with, with the direction that it's going in. What what changes do you think could get the council back on track? Well, I'd like to be clear. I do think they have done some really good things. I, I, I'm not I'm not critical of, of the Liberal Democrats in, of, of how they've handled what's going on. Mm. And I do think they've done some great things. Introducing, planning to introduce the water fountains, I think is a great move. I think it's something that will really help the homeless and also help reduce single-use plastics. Um, use single-use plastics. Um, there are some really good things. I'm not completely critical of everything that's happening. Um, I think there's been a few decisions, for example, I, as, as I publicly said about Murray House. There was other decisions in terms of, um, I, I felt it was... It seemed a strange decision to spend money um, on um, a releasing a, a top executive from the council when we can't keep open old people's home. I've, but, you know, there's some brilliant councillors in there, some, you know, really, really good councillors, Lib Dem councillors. We've got Alison Holt, you've got Samfold Hughes, you've got Mott Bainan, you've got Ollie Waring. There was so, so much talent, Olivia Bolt, so much talent there that, you know, I, I want to be clear that this is, I am not attacking the Liberal Democrats. Okay. Sharon, also, uh, as an independent councillor, of course, you can focus on issues that are particularly of importance to you. What what issues are you kind of most looking to focus on in Kingston? As a mother and also as someone that's always championed um, ecology generally, I'm, I'm really focusing on air pollution. I think it's a problem facing the whole of London. It's one of London's biggest killers and it particularly affects the younger the younger children because they spend more time exercising outside than adults. Um, I believe quite strongly in the work that the London Air Quality Network is doing through King's College London. Uh, it, they've done so much research on the best ways of tackling air pollution. This is one thing which I, I discussed with Liz prior to the manifesto launch was putting in some more quantitative, real policies that were going to make a difference. One of them which I champion and they champion is no idling zones outside school. There's lots of um, examples in London, including Marleybone, um, where they have done no, no idling zones outside school. It's dramatically reduced the pollution in those areas. One of, and one of the points which I raised in my blog was the current policy seemed to be focused on planting trees, uh, which both the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats both championed. But all the, the latest research shows that that does nothing for air pollution. You it, want something more done, more I substantial. Do. Trees, don't get me wrong, trees are lovely. <laughs> they look pretty, they, um, they're a good habitat, but they're not going to tackle air pollution. They actually, if you, if you plant trees along busy roads, they trap the pollutants and stop it from dispersing in, in the atmosphere. So it actually increases the pollution in those areas. It also um, leads to more ground level ozone, which is one of the particular problems that faces London's air quality is, is street level ozone. So in some ways it can be counterproductive. So I would like to see some more stantative policies which actually do actually make a difference. So differential parking charges, where you charge the most polluting vehicles and luxury vehicles mm. um, for, to act more for parking in, this, in, the, in the town centre or for parking for your parking badges. That's so, and you use that money then to pay for things like no idling zones outside schools. So you ring fence any revenue you raise by things like differential parking charges, and you apply that in ways that can actually make a real difference. Last couple of things, Sharon. Um, of course, you resigned for your own personal reasons. Do you think there are any other Lib Dem councillors who have been thinking of resigning? I don't. I don't know. I've not had any conversations with people in, in that in that um, vein. I obviously read James Giles's tweet, yes. as a lot <laughs> of people did. Um, I, I, but I. I'm not aware of, of who they are or... OK. Um, and, of course, you've left the Lib Dem group. Could you ever see yourself rejoining in the future? I appreciate it's, it's pretty early to, to say something like that, but would you ever rule it out? Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's not something I've considered at the moment. It took me a long time to get to this decision. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, I just want to focus on the residents of Alexandra Ward and serving them in the best way possible. Their interests have to be my primary concern. Brilliant. Councillor Sumner, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Henry.